My name is Mark Sign. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services of the Northfield Church for Sunday, June the 26th. If you have been involved in these before, uh, you kind of know the drill. We sing several songs. We observe the Lord's Supper, and uh, I have a message for you that I hope will be beneficial. So we will start with our singing uh, service. We sing from songs of faith and praise, but I know that everyone does not have that book. So I will give you the title so that you can either Google it or if you have a different book, uh, you can find the song and hopefully sing along. Uh, most of the songs I think are fairly familiar. We will start with song number 31. The title of this is Be Still and Know. Number 31. Be still and know. <clears throat> Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens me. And uh, another rather old song, number 590. 590. I remember singing this song when I was just a wee little lad. 590, Jesus is all the world to me. Jesus is all the world to me. Number 590. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings, and he gives them o'er and o'er. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvest golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I'll trust him when life's leading day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy. He's my friend. 
and uh, a song before the Lord's Supper, number 705. 705. Uh, the title of the song, I'm sorry, is A Common Love. 705, A Common Love. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common truth. In the truth of God's word. We've come to the portion of our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. We do that because we are commanded to do that. We are commanded in Acts, the 20th chapter and the 7th verse, uh, that says that on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. Jesus instituted this the night he was betrayed and Paul uh, reiterated it in uh, the 11th chapter of First Corinthians, almost word for word. And so what was done and what Jesus did was show the symbolism in the sacrifice that he was about to make. He was about to give his body. He was about to shed his blood. He was to do it because this was a part of God's plan it was part of God's plan from the beginning. And the purpose was that our sins could indeed be forgiven and could only be forgiven because we had a high priest who went through everything as a physical person that we did and did not sin, but then sacrificed himself. And so as we gather about the table, we have these two emblems, the bread, which represent uh, Jesus's body. And we have the grape juice, uh, which represents the blood that he shed for us. Each of these is so significant to us as we try to draw closer to God in knowing that Jesus gave his body and shed his blood. Uh, let's pray for uh, the bread. Our most heavenly father, we're just so grateful at this time as we gather about your table as we have been instructed to do on the first day of the week, uh, to break bread, to commune with you through the sacrifice that Jesus made. What we are mindful of through the emblems that are represented here is that first, Jesus uh, gave up his body. Uh, he was scorned, he was beaten, uh, he was stabbed. Uh, he was hung on a cross and nailed to it. And his body suffered so greatly. And we just can't understand the magnitude of that and understand that Jesus did that for us. Bless us, bless us as we partake of the bread and we get into Jesus's body. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The blood that Jesus shed was innocent blood. It was not the blood of a sinner. It was not the blood of anything, anyone who was guilty of something, but it was the blood of our Savior, the Son of God. Let's pray for uh, the cup. Our Heavenly Father, we're, we're so grateful that uh, Jesus was willing to go to the cross that his lifeblood poured out of him. Uh, and we just uh, are so grateful that uh, what we understand is that it is the blood that washes away our sins. We know that through Jesus's death and through his burial and through his resurrection, uh, that only through this vehicle can we uh, come into a proper relationship with you and that we can be fitted for eternal life. Bless us as we partake of uh, this fruit of the vine. We pray it in his most holy name, amen.
as a matter of convenience at this particular time, we do something else that is commanded of us on the first day of the week, and that is to uh, give back what we have laid by in store, uh, give back to the Lord. In Old Testament days, they tithed uh, 10%. In the very first century, uh, the early, early Christians, including Barnabas, uh, very often sold things that they had and laid the monies at the apostles' feet. The church has a mission uh, on this earth. It has a mission to bring folks to the Lord. It has a mission uh, to help those uh, that in many uh, cases cannot help themselves. And we pray that the monies that uh, we collect would be used for those purposes. Let's pray for the giving. Bless us as we give, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to show the gratitude of the blessings of life and know that every good thing that uh, comes to us comes down through you. Every good and perfect gift, as it says in the epistle of James. Continue to bless us and uh, continue to help us to give in a prosperous manner to give so that we understand that as we sow, so also we shall reap. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song before the lesson is number 406. And it's entitled, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Just a closer walk with thee. 406. <clears throat> I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. As I walk, dear Lord, close to Thee, just a closer walk with Thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea, daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toil and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who in me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but me. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be.
I certainly enjoyed the song service. I hope you were able to get into it. I know that uh, we praised the Lord and gave glory to our Creator, which is uh, what we are indeed supposed to do. And if you were there this morning, if uh, you were either there live or you live streamed uh, the service, I try each Sunday morning before the lesson uh, to let folks know what the service will be about the following Sunday. And I also try to give them some insight into what the evening service is all about. And so if you do remember, it was a very, very, very simple <laughs> uh, uh, title of my lesson. The title of my lesson was Strength. Strength. If we go to the dictionary, we find that strength is the quality of being strong. The terms that are used there are power and even force. Another definition is the degree of strength and intensity. Strength. If we turn to the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, so if you have a moment, either turn the pages of your Bible or if you have the Bible on your little device, go to the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 13. Verse 13 of chapter 4. It says, and this was very, very early in the church, just the fourth chapter of Acts. It snapped, said, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Those are just uh, marvelous words, aren't they? Uh, they looked at these two men. Peter was a fisherman, right? Uh, fishermen uh, didn't get a PhD in fishing. Fishing learned fish. Fishermen learned fishing from their father, or they learned it from their brothers. Uh, it was usually a family affair, and uh, you know, three or, three or four of the disciples held fairly lowly positions. Uh, it wasn't until the Apostle Paul, an apostle come lately, did a uh, one who was uh, uh, extremely educated uh, become an apostle. But uh, the people viewed Peter and John, and uh, if, if some some of them were around uh, just weeks and weeks before when uh, Jesus was walking through Galilee and preaching and teaching and healing, they saw Peter and John. And, and you know what? Uh, from a physical standpoint or from a, a, an educational standpoint, there was nothing marvelous about them. But the words that they said because they had the Holy Spirit within them, were marvelous words. The things that they were able to do were marvelous things. And what was it? Well, I would contend to you this evening, it was because they had strength. All right? They had strength. Now, we know when we read our New Testament that the, that strength uh, didn't come from who they physically were. The strength didn't come from Peter the fisherman. The strength came from the Holy Spirit that inspired them and lived within them. And so this is where the strength come, came from. And you know what? People have always admired strength, whether it is physical strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength. Strength is something to be 
admired. Now, if we want to go 180 from that, our weakness when we are without God is more than matched by the strength that we can have when we are with him. And so all of the things that the Bible indicates is that if we want to be strong for the Lord, if we want to be strong, godly, righteous people, we must avail ourselves of the strength that is there and available for us. Now, we can only do this, <laughs> and, and you know, this may sound a little weird. We can, we can only manage to avoid, you know, if, if we can manage to avoid interfering with what God had plan for us, wonderful things can be accomplished. I've seen human beings accomplish things that they just, from, you know, from, from an outward appearance, they had no right to be able to accomplish those things. A strength came from somewhere. When we visit the sick, when we uh, get in touch with people who have needs, this comes from an inner strength, inner strength that we have. Not all of us come by this easily. It's something that we tap into, right? It's something that we tap into. Athletes have come to understand that the stronger they are in their particular field, the better they are. And as weird as this sounds, look at some of the golfers today. Most of the top 40 or 50 golfers are buff. They're in the weight room. They've gotten physically strong. And if they're smart, along with that, they, they put the rest of it together. They, they control their diets more closely and they put better foods into their body because they want that strength because the strength helps them to perform at a higher level. We can be people for the Lord. We can be the people that we want, that the Lord wants us to be. We can be persons of extraordinary strength. The key is what connects us to God. In the 15th chapter of the book of John, Jesus put it this way. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. That's Jesus talking. You are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. That's John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5. We begin to become stronger when we humbly acknowledge our weakness. <laughs> and that is the truth, isn't it? When we humbly not only acknowledge our weakness, but we acknowledge God's sovereign right as our creator to set the terms of our fellowship with him. And I did say that right. Jesus sets the terms. Uh, I'm sorry. God sets the terms of what our fellowship with him is all about. 
It's not a haphazard thing. The terms are written for us in the truth of his word. And it it's God who determines what the gospel, what the good news will require of us. And true strength on our part comes from respecting his requirements. Now, a, a good part of my educational background was spent outside of the classroom because uh, during my tenure as a teacher, I also coached uh, several sports. And part of what I tried to get across to my athletes were there were there were requirements for getting better at what they did. It's kind of like the old joke, you know, if you've been on the street in New York and someone says, oh, how do I get the Carnegie Hall? And the laughing joke is practice, practice, practice. How do I reach the pinnacle of my particular um, uh, a talent? And that is through practice. Singers practice. Athletes practice. Writers practice. Actors practice. Practice, practice, practice. Why? Because those are the requirements for getting better. And for us, the requirement of getting better and living godly life, a godly lives are respecting God's requirements for us. Let me throw something at you. Do uh, you remember when the pandemic hit a couple of years ago? Do you remember what went off the grocery shelves first? <laughs> you do, don't you? Toilet paper. You couldn't find a roll of toilet paper. People went into the stores and literally took it just completely out. Uh, toilet paper was backlogged. Because people saw uh, an in, in, insufficiency in their life and they try to fill it. Well, in our lives, insufficiency means a lot to us. We worry that if the time comes, will we have enough of something? You know what happens here on the East Coast when there's a hurricane warning? When they tell us that the weather is going to be bad, the winds are going to blow 70, 80 miles an hour, we may lose our electricity. The, the shelves in the stores empty, milk, bread, the, the, uh, the, the important aspects of life just fly off the shelves. The fruits and the vegetables and you go in there and, you know, uh, it's bumper to bumper people. Why? Because of insufficiency. We're, we're afraid of not having enough of what we need. And you know what? There are some of life's basic requirements that have nothing to do with toilet paper, that have nothing to do with fruits or vegetables or milk or butter or bread. There are more spiritual aspects to our life that we worry about as far as sufficiency and self-sufficiency is concerned. Intangible necessities. Will we have a sufficient amount of love? Will we have a sufficient amount of appreciation? Will we have a sufficient amount of understanding? You know what? Interestingly enough, if it's true that we have been created by God, and I know that you and I believe that, any adequacy apart from him 
is simply sufficient. It's sufficient without our Creator. Now, speaking of his apostleship, Paul enunciates the principle that holds true for all human beings in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's start with verse 4. This is about sufficiency. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God. I'm starting at verse 4 of chapter 3. Not that we are adequate. Now, the word for adequate is sufficient. Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves. But our adequacy, our sufficiency, it says, is from God, who also made us adequate. He made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Our adequacy comes through God's spirit abiding in us. That's where we get our sufficiency. The glorious truth is that when we become Christians, God is in us and we are in him and we can do much, much more than just get by. And get by is in quotation marks. I don't know about you, but in my life, I want to do more than get by. I want to succeed. I want to be adequate and sufficient in the Lord. And through God, every obstacle that's in our way can be swept away. And according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, it says, In all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Not conquerors of people, conquerors of life. Conquerors not just of this life, the adequacy in this life, but the sufficiency of our life to come. It comes because we are created people and we have a sufficiency, we have a strength that comes through God, not through man and not through us. In First Timothy chapter 2, I'm Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Paul said to his protege, Timothy, he said, be rightly related to God. And to be rightly re related to God is to believe this. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of a sound mind. God has given us these things. He has given us this strength. A wise Hebrew proverb says, the soul of man is the lamp of God. Man is weak. He's a weak and miserable animal until the light of God burns his soul. But when that light burns, man becomes the most powerful being in the world. Nor can this be otherwise. For what then acts in him is no longer his strength, but the strength of God. If those words sounded too good for me, they were. Those were the words of the Russian writer of War and Peace, Leo Tolstoy. And he finished it. And, and this is where I want to finish my lesson this evening. For what then acts in him, that's acts in you and I, is no longer our strength, but the strength of God. We want that. We want the strength of God 
to reside in each one of us. To do that, it starts in developing a proper relationship with our God. Jesus said in the Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. The Ethiopian eunuch looked down after he was taught by Philip and he says that where's water? What hinders me from being baptized? On the day of Pentecost, when Peter touched the hearts of the people, they said, what shall we do? And Peter said, you repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In order to get the strength that God wants to avail us of, we have to be his children. We have to take Jesus into our life. We have to get rid of our former life, repent of the sins that we've committed. We have to confess with all of our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be baptized for the remission of our sins so that we may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and so that we may come into a right relationship with God. And I know we all want that. So the invitation is open to you. If you've read, if you've studied, and you know what you need to do, if you need to do it tonight, call. If you need to study more, let us know. And we desire to study with us, with you. Let's all pray together as we finish. Our Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for the strength that we can find that only comes through you. We know that that strength is much greater than what we ourselves are. That it'll allow us to do things that we would never have thought of doing. That it will enable, it will enable us to live lives that we would never have thought that we could have lived. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would continue to bless us as your children. Help us to, to come into your sphere so that we can experience the, the strength that, that only comes through you. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we go through this next week. Help us to uh, uh, make our little part of the world better by shining as beacons to the world. Help us to show that we have an inner strength and that that inner strength comes through you. Continue to bless us. I pray that you will forgive us of our sins and keep us on the right path. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I hope you will be safe and may God bless you all. The Lord.